Hello everyone. So in this video, I want to talk about phasers. So actually, phaser is a complex number which is representing a sinusoidal function. Okay, that's a phasor actually vector. We're calling it a phasor vector as well. What does that mean? For example, here I have a sine function over here, right? And this sine function on the horizontal axis, we're having um, the angles that are going from 0 to 2 pi. Okay, so now we can have a vector that will represent each... Um, each location of this sine function. What does that mean? For example, when I'm going from 0 to pi over 2, we can have, for example, here that we have 30 degrees, which is equal to pi over 6, okay? This 30 degrees can be represent over here as a vector, okay? So from 0 to 30, if I call it omega t of the sine function, then this angle over here is our omega t okay so representing a sinusoidal function as a complex number right let's do another one so for example when i'm at pi over 2 pi over 2 is a vector that i have over here right and this angle over here is pi over 2 okay now whenever we have a vector so I'm going to draw the same vector that I had only that here I don't want to have the circle so let's say that I have my vector the 30 degrees vector okay if this is my imaginary axis and if this is my real axis and here I have a 30 degrees then I can represent this vector as the sinusoid um, representation as well right so if I come down here this vector over here let's call this vector vector a so this red one will be a cosine of 30 degrees and I'm gonna have a sine of 30 degrees okay so now for example whenever we have um, if you remember in Euler's formula we had a cosine of omega t plus theta that was equal to a e to the j omega t plus theta plus e to the negative j omega t plus theta all of these over 2 and then each of these e to the power of j theta can be represented as cosine of theta plus j sine of theta. Okay, as we can represent this vector a that we have here, we can represent it as cosine of 30 degrees plus j sine of 30 degrees. So the real part of it is that cosine and then um, the imaginary part is the part that is on the um, imaginary axis. Now, in the phasor notation, actually we are using polar coordinates, okay? What does that mean? So whenever I have a sinusoid function, let's say again I have a sine of omega t plus theta. I can represent this as a magnitude with the angle of theta. Okay, so this is called the polar coordinate. Now we have other representations such as rectangular uh, representation. So this is polar representation. We have rectangular representation in which we're going to have, for example, if I have some z which is equal to x plus j y, this is called a rectangular 
representation. So now, why are we even looking at these representations? Because sometimes it is easier to use these notations. Um, like, for example, it is easier to uh, look at the representation of a sinusoid function as a complex number. And then this way, we will actually get rid of doing uh, differential equations and like make it in more complex. So this way it will be easier if we go to the phasor domain and then do our analysis in the electrical circuits based on phasor notations. And then we can go back to, um, for example, time domain. Okay, now each of the electrical elements, they will have their own phasors, okay? So let's go down here. So whenever we want to go to the phasor domain, we have to make sure that we are converting each element that we have in the electrical circuit to a phasor, okay? For example, if I have a resistor, resistor in a phasor domain is actually the same. So Z is the impedance of the resistor Okay, so Z, the impedance, is actually analogous to the resistance in the time domain. But now we are in the phasor domain, okay? So what does that mean? I mean that whenever I have the Ohm's law, V is equal to Ri, in the phasor domain, I can say V is equal to Zi, and Z is my impedance. So why am I saying that whenever I want, I want to do um, an analysis in electrical circuits, sometimes it's better to go to the phasor domain to avoid doing any differential equations because let's say that I have a capacitor or a, an inductor. So the capacitor over here, um, let's have this capacitor. We all know that the I that is passing through the capacitor is equal to C dVc over dt, right? The differential of the voltage across the capacitor. Now, let's say that I want to get rid of this um, differential equation. So I can go to the phasor domain, and I can find the impedance of the capacitor. And when I find the impedance of the capacitor, and I'm in the phasor domain, then that way I can look at my... Um, capacitor as an impedance that can work in the um, Ohm's law. What does that mean? So if I want to go to the phasor domain, I'm going to have my capacitor, but this time I'm finding its impedance Zc. Okay, now let's see what is um, Zc. So the impedance of the capacitor is actually equal to y 1 over um, j omega c. Okay, now how can we find that actually d over dt in the phasor domain, so when, when I'm in the time domain, d over dt, when it goes to the phasor domain, it becomes j omega. Okay, now let's just substitute that in the current, uh, in this current equation of the capacitor. So I'm going to have I of the capacitor. Let's write it actually in a phasor domain. So we have the I of the capacitor is equal to <clears throat> the capacitance. Now I have J omega instead of D over DT, and then I have VC. Right? Then if I want, so now I'm in the phasor domain. So I can write this as Vc is equal to 1 over j omega c multiplied by Ic. Now, Ohm's law. I have I, I have Vc. So this will be the impedance of the capacitor. Okay, so the impedance of the capacitor is always equal to 1 over j omega c, and the omega is the angular frequency that we're going to have in our circuit. Okay, so for the resistor, the impedance is the same as the resistance. 
for the capacitor, Z of C is equal to 1 over J omega C. And for, for an inductor, um, if I have an inductor over here, L, we know that the voltage across the, an inductor is equal to L DIL over DT. So I'm going to go to the phasor domain. I'm going to have the voltage of this um, across this inductor is equal to L. Instead of D over DT, we're going to have J omega I L. Ohm's law. V is equal to Z I. So this is the impedance of an inductor. Okay, so the impedance of the inductor will be J omega L. Okay, so in electrical circuits, we can always go to this domain um, to avoid doing differential equations and everything will be in, um, everything will be the like algebraic equations that we can do easily. And if we need to know anything in the um, time domain, we can go back to the time domain after we do our calculations in um, phasor domain, okay? So let me do one example using these um, notations that we talked about. All right, so let's say that I have this circuit with an impedance, uh, with, sorry, an inductor and a resistor. Let's go over here. So let's say that I have this circuit with a resistor and an inductor. This is VAB. That's point A, point B. Let's say that I want to find current. I, A, B. Okay, this is R, this is L. So if I want to do that, I need to find the um, volt. So the voltage V, A, B, I have to find the impedances of R and L to go to the phasor domain in order to find um, the current because it's easier to do it in the phasor domain so we can have everything in the algebraic form. So if I go to the phasor domain, what I'm going to have is, so the resistance, the impedance of the resistance will remain the same. So Z, R is equal to R. And then we set that the impedance of an inductor is equal to J omega L. This is equal to ZL. And then we have VAB and we have IAB. Okay? Now, when you convert everything to the, to the phasor domain, so whenever you have every all the elements in their impedance format, you can look at them as we were as we have some resistances okay because impedance is also valid in this ohms law okay so right now i can say that okay i have two impedances this one and this one that are in series as i said impedance will have the same rules as we had for um, resistance in the time domain Okay, so what can I do? I can find Z equal, which is the equivalent impedance in this circuit. The equivalent impedance is ZR plus ZL. And that is R plus J omega L. So I know that VAB is equal to the impedance. So it's R plus J omega L multiplied by the current that I have, IAB. So from here, IAB will be equal to 1 over R plus J omega L multiplied by VAB. Okay, so whenever we have a capacitor, whenever we have an inductor in a circuit, 
uh, it's always easier to go to the phaser domain, do the analysis there, and then if anything is required in the time domain, you can go back to the time domain after that. All right, so I hope you understood this um, phaser domain. So whenever we have an electrical circuit with an AC actually circuit, that it has inductor or capacitor in it, we can always go to the phaser domain uh, to avoid differential equations. And then we can do our analysis in the phaser domain. And at the end, we can go back to the time domain format again. Okay, so for um, solving the re the phaser circuit, you can use any solution that you are comfortable with, such as Thevenin's theorem, Norton's theorem, superposition, source transformation, nodal or mesh analysis. So it doesn't matter which one you want to use, you can use any of them. And then at the end, you have to go back to the uh, time domain. All right. Okay, so I will see you in the next video. And thanks for watching.